Yo, 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 what is up guys? Nick Nakai here, Let's Drift Media. Thank you guys for coming back to the channel. If it's your first time here, please hit that subscribe button down below as well as drop a comment. It really helps out the YouTube algorithm. So on today's episode, we are going to be talking about the Think Diag or Think Car Think Scan SD handheld portable OBD2 scanner. So this thing's packed with a lot of features. Really want to show you guys this. Um, you guys saw, may have seen my last video where they sent me the Bluetooth scanner. So that one was a really awesome scanner, but this one is super cool because it has a screen built in. So that was one thing with the other one that you actually had to pull out your phone to connect it to view what you're trying to do with the vehicle. Where this one, it's just simple, plug it in and get moving. So today's episode is going to be filmed on my iPhone because I'm trying to get that 4K footage. I think it looks a lot cleaner. Let me know down in the comments if you notice any video improvements. Uh, still waiting on my mic adapter so I can run my real mic to the iPhone. So right now I'm going to try out this uh, AirPod and see if the audio quality improves. Because I noticed on my last videos it was kind of like in and out with the audio quality. So hopefully this makes a difference. And if you weren't aware, in my previous video, reviewing the Depstech dual lens horoscope, we're doing a giveaway on this. So if you go ahead to go to that last video, drop a comment, uh, you're entered in the chance to win this badass tool. So anyways, let's get started with today's video. All right, so here we got it straight out the box. Pretty much you have your scanner, cable, screen, built in, all in one. In the box, you just get some instruction pamphlets and uh, USB-C to USB cable to transfer files because, and the cool thing about this is you could actually screen record and take screenshots of what you see on the screen and then transfer it over. So if you wanted to even put like a micro SD card, which is not included, you can go ahead and do that. So you want to take like a screenshot of the trouble code to show the customer what's going on. So I thought that's pretty cool because it runs off the Android system. So it's pretty much like an Android phone. You can like swipe down and screen record, but we'll show all that in a little bit. Uh, retails at about $200 on Amazon, but if you use the link in the description in my video, you can get it for about 180. So that's kind of a cool little hookup. 4-inch screen, uh, this scan tool can read data streams, live data streams, uh, monitor readiness, freeze frame data from when the trouble code occurred, which I thought is pretty helpful when trying to duplicate a concern, say you have like a misfire or something that only happens on cold start. It's nice to be able to read the freeze frame data and see exactly when it happened and what conditions caused it to happen. Obviously, you can read and clear trouble codes, check engine lights, uh, ABS lights, and you can even perform an EVAP system test, which I have not tried out, so maybe we can try that out and check it out on the Prius. Uh, special functions, it has a whole lot of them. Uh, we can go ahead and take a look at those, but just off the tip of the iceberg, you can do ABS bleeding, injector coding for like BMWs, you have to code the fuel injector to the vehicle. Um, coolant bleeding, again on BMWs, a lot of them have electric water pumps. You can go ahead and run the water pump through the scanner to bleed the air out of the cooling system. But yeah, one drawback I will just give off the bat is this scan tool does not do active tests. So it's not a two-way scanner like the last Bluetooth scanner I did a review on. So that is kind of unfortunate. I really wish you can do active tests and activate actuators, solenoids, stuff like that, because it's really helpful. But I do like how the screen is at least attached to this and you don't have to whip out your phone versus the last model I reviewed. So yeah, I'll show you guys all this a little bit more in depth. I'm gonna go ahead and pull in the Prius and we can take a look at it. All right, well, since my Prius has no fault codes right now, I went ahead and just unplugged the mass airflow sensor just so we can have some data to look at. Last time we did the coil pack unplug. This time we're just gonna unplug the MAF and check it out. All right, so first steps first, go ahead and plug it in, if I can, to the OBD2 port. Should kind of boot up right there. We're just going to go ahead and key on. Uh, while it loads, we'll even just start the car just because so it could pick up the check engine light. See if it picks it up. 
Uh, yep, now we got a check engine light code on. So now we could have something to actually look at, at least some data. I'll go ahead and put key on. Still booting, should be ready any second. So you can see here at the top, we got the time displayed as well as Wi-Fi. You can connect this device to Wi-Fi, which is kind of cool for when you have to update your software or even if you were to purchase some more of those reset features I was talking about. But one cool feature I really like is the fact that it displays battery voltage. I think that's pretty cool. So you have all the options right here. Starting on the top, you can swipe it down. I was telling you guys, it's like an Android phone. So you can screen record right here. You can take a screenshot or rotate the screen as well as turn the brightness down. Uh, down here, we have the home button, the back button, and this one is, oh, it takes you straight to the files. So that would be down here, the think files, which are basically your stored videos or screenshots you've taken. We'll just go over the not as important features really quick, like settings. Obviously, this one is the four system scan tool, so only covers ABS, SRS, ECM, and TCM. Kind of mess around with stuff in there if you want. There was the file I told you about. Right here is the Think Store. This is a spot where you can download more special functions that you want to do those resets those programming uh, you want to program a window regulator uh, you can see right here you get two free ones no charge so i would say kind of choose wisely depending on what you're actually going to be using it for but as far for me um i'm not gonna get any of them just yet just because a lot of these like window calibration on toyotas you just hold the window switch TPMS, uh, I don't believe this scan tool can program sensors, so I'm not going to mess with that. Steering angle reset on Toyotas, it's not as necessary. A lot of these, at least for me, on Toyotas are not as necessary. Uh, oil reset, definitely don't need that. But say you did have a BMW while working at BMW, I learned that a lot of things replaced need to be reprogrammed. So this scan tool may come in handy working on those German engineered vehicles but at least for me i'm not really gonna mess with those softwares because it's not that important to me so coming over the maintenance that's exactly the same spot it'll just give you the same list of special features for initializations and reprogramming all those options are right there so over here if you come to scan this is if you want to pick like brand specific but for me, because when you do this, you have to download additional software. I find it kind of annoying. I found most use just coming right here to the OBD feature. It did everything I needed to do, pick up codes, read live data, read o, uh, monitor readiness, clear fault codes, freeze frame data, all the good stuff. So we're just going to hop in here first. So you can see right there we have the VIN. Malfunction indicator light status currently on. Diagnostic trouble codes, two. Readiness completed, three, because I did recently clear the codes before this video. And all that good stuff. So we're just going to hit OK and get further in. So starting at the top, read readiness for the monitors. This is very helpful, again, if you're smogging your car. You need to have all your monitors, besides EVAP, of course, passed, ready to go. You can see we have some ready, some not ready. Cat's not ready because I cleared the codes previously, but let's go ahead and hop back. You can go ahead and read the freeze frame data for the fault codes that we have stored. So you can see all the information of what everything was going on when the vehicle noticed that the check engine light occurred, which is very helpful. Freeze frame data, if you know what you're looking at, can really save your butt because sometimes you'll have cars that only the issue that they're concerned about 
only happens at certain times. Like maybe it happens on a cold start. Maybe it happens when the vehicle is really hot or going up a hill under heavy load. It's nice to have all this information because sometimes you can't duplicate their concern and being able to read the freeze frame data can help you narrow down your search and get on to fixing the actual problem with the vehicle. So we'll go ahead and go to read fault code, see what we got going on in here. Once I got the mass airflow sensor unplugged, let's see we got the PO102 and the PO113. It even gives us current, pending, or permanent, and all three are checked off right now because obviously the airflow sensor is unplugged. You can go ahead and clear the fault code data here if you wanted to after you have done the repair or fixed whatever you're trying to fix. I don't think I actually cleared. Oh, there we go. They have been cleared. I mean, it's a hard fault since it's straight unplugged. It will return. But we can go ahead and check out some live data right now. Oops, I did not mean to go back that far. Let's go ahead and hop back in there. While we're waiting, uh, drop a comment if this camera quality is any better. So I'm really curious. The whole purpose I bought this iPhone was because it said it shot in 4K at 60 frames per second. And a Sony a7S III is like $5,000 or something crazy that I don't want to spend. But if this camera quality is good enough for you guys, I'm down to keep rolling with it. Oh my god. Okay. And right here, you can even see test results. If you want to just check like misfire data, if you had a certain cylinder misfiring, you can see how many times it's misfiring versus the other ones. You can even check in general. And it'll just count all the misfires. EGR sensor monitor, purge flow monitor. All those cool little test functions. But I really wish it did have active tests. That's one thing I probably said a bunch of times, but it's one thing I wish it had. So we'll just go to live data right now. And we're just going to put all. and see what we read so now we have pretty much live data of all the sensors all the components that send information to the ecu so really you don't need to hit all but i'm just going to put it all so you guys could actually see it in person we'll get and start the car still telling us we have two dtcs in the ecu but it's got throttle position sensor percentage Mass airflow, you can see that's stuck right there at 0.090 grams per second because it's unplugged, so it's not reading nothing. Calculated load value, cat temp, pre-cat and after-cat, EGR, throttle actuator control, all kinds of good data. I mean, it depends what you're trying to troubleshoot, but it's nice to have all this data when you are trying to troubleshoot. Say you were trying to look for a bad sensor or something like that, you can actually read the data and see what it's reading and see if it's within spec, as well as fuel trim is a nice information to have. Let's scroll all the way to the bottom. Yeah, even counting time since engine start. So basically, all this data right here, working at Toyota, uh, is like the exact same stuff that we see on the big laptops. So I thought it's kind of cool to have it all in a handheld scanner to see what you're looking at. Very helpful information depending on what type of problem you're trying to diagnose when it comes to what vehicle. All right, so I went ahead and replugged in the mass airflow sensor. We're gonna go ahead and clear the fault code and just simulate, say you did a repair on a vehicle and you wanted to make sure that you fixed the problem. So we're gonna go right here. Nope. Clear fault code, yes. Sweet. Go ahead and start the car. Now we have no check engine light 
and the fault code is cleared. So that pretty much sums up the video for the ThinkScan SD by ThinkCar. Um, my opinion personally, it's a pretty awesome tool to have in your toolbox, uh, especially when you just want to pull out a quick tool to read trouble codes, see what's going on with the check engine light and figure it out, or clear the codes even, or even seeing if your car has all the monitors passed, ready to pass smog. So those are cool features about it. Uh, a lot of the reset features and the initialization features, I don't see myself using it just because I mainly work on Toyotas and there's not too many times where you actually have to initialize something. It's a lot of Toyota stuff, it's like plug and play, not too much computer programming going on. The one drawback though that I would say, I'm really sorry things scan, but I wish this was a two-way like the Bluetooth model. I'm surprised it's not because it's a whole unit but I really like on the Bluetooth model you guys have that it has the two-way operation uh, so you can perform active tests, stuff like that, for, uh, activate solenoids and actuators. I thought that was probably like the coolest feature and kind of disappointed that this one doesn't have it considering how much it costs, but maybe they have another one that does have it and with the built-in screen. But that's pretty much a Nick Nakai review for you guys. Hope you guys found this video useful. Maybe you were in the market and saw the scan tool on Amazon or Instagram, something like that. But that's all I got for today's episode, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Catch you guys later. Peace! Hey, Bill, I'm in the mood for a switcher. I hit the function, hit the road light till I hiccup. I hit the stage and leave with money that's a sticker. She picture perfect, so I told him I'm a flicker.